Hello and welcome to Datacast Solutions Statistics and Data Mining 101 using NIME. In this chapter we're going to focus on the chi-square goodness of fit test. So in this chapter I'm going to explain how to conduct a chi-square goodness of fit test and this is a test that we're going to apply when you have one categorical variable from a single population. And it's used to determine whether the sample data are consistent with a hypothesized distribution. So the chi-square test focuses on discrepancies between the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies. So I'm going to use as an example, suppose a company printed baseball cards and it claimed that 30% of its cards were rookies, 60% veterans, and 10% all-stars. I'd like to gather a random sample of baseball cards and use the chi-square goodness of fitness test to see whether our sample distribution differed significantly from the company distribution claims that they have made. Now, one of the appeals of the chi-square test is that it easily adapts to multiple groups and multiple outcomes. It's scalable. So as long as the different groups are distinct from one another, um, it's going to continue to be, work just fine. So this is, in fact, the only important rule when using this test. So computing the, the chi-square ratio is actually fairly straightforward. It's taking the difference between the observed frequency and the expected frequency, squaring it, and dividing it by the expected frequency. And that's the whole computation. Now, unfortunately, the chi-square values do not follow a normal distribution. And this is actually because the chi-square value is, by definition, always positive and the normal distribution is symmetric on both sides of the, the mean. So the good news is, however, that the squares use uh, another distribution which is well understood. As you look at that distribution, hopefully that looks familiar, very similar to the F distribution. The charts are, of course, different, but um, the curve itself and the pattern is certainly the same and we're going to use a similar lookup table to decide at what threshold the critical value will be to reject the null hypothesis based on the ratio we compute. Now, the requirements for a chi-square test are pretty straightforward and simple. It has to be a random sample. The variable under, that you're looking at has to be categorical. The expected value of the number of the sample observations in each level is a is at least five and this approach consists of the same five st four steps excuse me that we always do we state the hypothesis we formulate an analysis plan we analyze the sample data and determine and interpret the results when dealing with a chi-square test typically the null hypothesis is going to be that the data is consistent with a specified distribution, and the alternate hypothesis is the data is not consistent with a specified distribution. Now you may in fact see that um, the null hypothesis can be specified as the portion of observations at each level of the categorical variable. Meaning, for in my example, the number of rookies is equal to the number of rookies, and the number of all-stars is equal to the number of all-stars. And the alternate hypothesis would be that at least one of those is not true. For our analysis plan, of course, we need to define the significance level as always, um, and um, you know, typically, like we mentioned in every other test we've been doing before, uh, 0.5, uh, 0.1, and 0.1 are, are some of the most typical values, but you can use any number between 0 and 1, of course. And the test method in this case is going to be the chi-square goodness-to-fit test. So, the analysis plan, we're going to use sample data, and we're going to find the degrees of freedom 
the expected frequency counts, and we're going to the test statistic, and the p-value associated with the test statistic. The degrees of freedom is going to be equal to the number of levels of unique values of the categorical value variable minus 1. The expected frequency counts is going to be at each level of that categorical variable the sample um, sizes and times that we would hypothesize would represent a portion of the population. Next we'll produce our test statistic using the chi-square uh, technique that we've already been demonstrating here defined as the sum of the observations minus the expected value squared divided by the expected value. And then finally we're going to compute a p-value and that's the probability of observing a statistic as extreme as the test statistic. Finally to interpret the results if the sample findings are unlikely to have occurred um, then we would reject the null hypothesis and typically that's simply comparing the p-value to a significance level that we established before the test began. Now normally I would do this sample in NIME obviously for this class but in this case I'm going to do it in Excel because it'll be a little bit easier for you to follow along since each computation in NIME would require several nodes and a much lengthier explanation for a simple computation. So let's go back to my example and assume that the Acme Toy Company uh, prints baseball cards and they claim it's 30% rookies, 60% veterans, and 10% all-stars. Now we draw a random sample of 100 cards and it has 50 rookies, 45 veterans, and 5 all-stars. Is this consistent with Acme's claim if I use a 0.05 significance level? So the null hypothesis is that the rookies, veterans, and all-stars match the percentages 30, 60, and 10 respectively. The alternate hypothesis is that at least one of the proportions in the null hypothesis is false. Now, the analysis plan is going to be a significance level of 0 0.05. We're going to execute a chi-square goodness of fitness test of the null hypothesis. So the first step is very straightforward. We're simply going to take the expected value and subtract the observed value and record the difference. And we'll do that for each of the three values. Next, for each of the three values, I'm going to use the power of function in Excel to raise each one to square each individual value. Next, I'll divide that result of the different squared divided by the expected value. Finally, I can sum those three values for the rookies, veterans, and all-stars to come up with my chi-square solution. And for ease of use, I use the built-in function in Excel for a chi-square distribution lookup so I can return the p-value from that value of ratio. So as we can see, the final solution, my p-value is 0 0.0001. the p-value is well below my 0 0.05 significance level, so I can reject the null hypothesis. At least one of these groups does not match the company's um, promise to the ratios of cards that we will be given. So I do want to take a minute, however, to show you how I can do something slightly different with this same type of chi-square analysis within nine. So I'm going to take a look here at some data that I've produced as a simple table. And you see I've got expected values, rookies, veterans, all-stars, and some numbers, and then the observed values of rookies. In this case, the numbers are very, very close. Rookies are 30, the observed is 29. 60 and 60 were the same, and 11 and 11. Now, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a cross tab. And one of the things that the cross tab node does is a chi-square test. Um, so it's actually quite easy if your data is put in the right format. Now, again, I could have shown you how to use um, group by nodes and then pivot table to, to turn this and, and build this data, you know, so that it looks like that for you automatically. But I assume you can figure out how to do those types of things in nine. However, what this one is gonna do is um, right here. It's going to test the null hypothesis that there is no association between the row variabilities. So basically the null hypothesis is that there's no association between the expected values and the observed values. So for my cross tab, I've told it the row name column and the variable column and counts is the column that I want to apply it to. So when I execute and open the views, what I get here is the expected values are 10, 30, and 60, and representing those percentages, and the observed values were 11, 29, and 60, and I get for a degrees of freedom two, the value of 0.06 and the probability 0.96. Now my probability at this point, well, 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 <laughs> well above the 0 0.05 threshold. Um, meaning I can in fact, I can reject the null hypothesis that there is no association. In other words, it's kind of done the opposite of what I did with Excel. I've said there, there is clearly an association between um, these expected values and the observed values. Now, I also created a separate set where I used very different data where the expected values are 30, 60, and 10, and I did 50, 45, and five, just like our last example. And just like the last example, when I execute and open the views, this time, my probability comes out to be 0 0.01, which means at this point, it's well below my 0 0.05. Um, so I, I can see that there is, there is at least one of these categories is statistically different from what the company has represented for their cards. And that's, like I said, that's just, it's the same test kind of done in the opposite. You're looking for, for how it used to work um, by testing, are they associated with themselves or not? So summary, chi-square goodness of fit. Um, this is applied when you have a categorical variable with a single population and need to determine whether the sample data are consistent with the hypothesized distribution. The distribution does not follow the standard normal distribution. It looks much more like the, the F distribution, um, which is still well understood. And um, the method, the comparison of an established set of expected frequencies to those of the observed frequencies is, a, is the method that we use to execute a chi-square test. That completes this chapter of the class. Feel free to move on to the next chapter.